Hello, this is the Torg Eternity Delphi Council debriefings where the storm has a name. We are your hosts, Lehman, Jay, and Mark, and today we will be doing kind of a part two to Pan Pacifica since the last episode, about half of it, was uh, discussing an email that was sent to us. So um, we didn't get any email since then. But you can email us at torgdcd at gmail.com, and then we will also read your email for a future episode and comment or answer questions. So we're going to just talk a little bit more about Pan Pacifica for however long we can keep it up and keep going, or until we reach that hour-ish mark. So we're going to be talking again about various cultures, groups, peoples, etc. in uh, Pan Pacifica. So we, we did spend a, a large portion of the last episode talking about the corporations, but there are lots to talk about when it is corporations because Pan Pacifica is a, a corporation heavily centric reality. So, Jay, any other additional thoughts on corporations, structures, different ones, et cetera? I think one thing, um, I, we, we kind of just talked broadly, I guess, about corporations mm. last time, where now we can maybe talk a bit more specifically. Right. Um, but one, one of the important things, I think, in Pan Pacifica is much like Mobius, Raiko is a High Lord, but she doesn't actually control her home cosm. Mm. Uh, there's multiple uh, mega corporations there, and Kanawa is just one of them. Uh, they are one of the most powerful, though. There's sort of a group uh, called the Triad, which is made up of the Kanawa Corporation, uh, Shori Fusion Systems, and Misaki Computers. Um, and they basically run the conglomerate. Uh, other mega corporations, um, I presume other mega corporations know about the conglomerate because we have three star holdings in the Rauru block as well in Pan Pacifica. As far as I've seen though, Misaki Computers and Shori Fusion are not involved in this uh, invasion directly, at least like with assets. Uh, but one of the other interesting things is you have these mega corporations that just own you know, thousands of minor corporations and companies and all kinds of things back on Marketplace. But on Core Earth and Pan Pacifica, they might be the same companies, but just with different names or they've opened up entirely new companies. So there is a list uh, in the Pan Pacifica source book of a lot of corporations that are owned under the Kanawa umbrella. And that includes uh, ones like Anyong Security, which is a South Korean security firm. Uh, so whether that actually exists in marketplace or not isn't actually really directly stated. Um, we do know from Raiko's sort of bio that there are many of the same places in marketplace as on Core Earth. We don't have like a full blown map of it though. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very different because in classic Torg, it was just like a weird city on one continent kind of thing, if memory serves. But it um, was kind of like the whole city took each over the corp. Was kinda, yeah, was a continent yeah. that was a big city that even kind of took offshore additions because they ran out of land. Yeah, whereas this seems more like it's core Earth, like the but. It's not really detailed very much. So what that means is the GM can kind of do whatever they like. So there might be a Korean and Young security uh, back on Marketplace that's still owned by Kanawa, or An Young could have been just created on Core Earth in the past, like, 50 years or whatever mm -hmm. during the preparation uh, for this invasion. Because one thing they do mention is that companies have been being purchased uh, created and even like closed and merged since the 1950s on Core Earth as Raiko prepared for this invasion. Because as we know, Raiko and Malro uh, are much mm -hmm. more long term planners, whereas, you know, Mobius and Barakaw just sort of run on in. <laughs> so 
uh, a lot of these would just be just core earth companies that got bought out and many of the people who work there don't even know there's anything strange about them and it could even be that they're just there as a statistical anomaly of being traded between different companies constantly um, just as a way to hide the paper trail to something else. And mm -hmm. they might not even ever interact with any Tech 24 materials or anything, right? So there gets to be some issues if your Storm Knight's just running around in Pan Pacifica, blasting people working at the office buildings. <laughs> because, it, I mean, in true cyberpunk form, you could be like, you know, down with all the corpos, you know, the man, and just start blasting. But a lot of these are potentially just innocent core Earth workers looking for a job away from you know the infected you know wherever they could so you there's definite shades of gray it's uh something that you really have to to worry about uh, i don't know how in depth we want to go into individual uh corporations per se i think the power suit companies are pretty big ones mm -hmm. um but i guess i'll pass it to mark for now <laughs> okay mark so the, I don't think you can have Pan Pacifica without having the corporations based on how Pan Pacifica is built. Um, as Jay pointed out, they are very much, they're very much um, left to the the GM's desires and what he or she needs for their campaign. Um, it gives you the flexibility to be able to pick and choose. You get some loose stuff like on page 92 in the Pan Pacifica source book, you've got a bunch of paragraphs on each of the corporations, but that's almost all you get on them. They, they, you know, you get pieces dropped here and there. And when you're talking about the power suits, you know, it talks about who the power suit company, the company that built the power suit and et cetera. And so you've got pieces here and there. It, you can pull them together as you need it. You need, I kind of, get the idea that the that all of the ones for the most part the ones listed in uh in the source book are really core earth the core earth components of them now there could be marketplace analogs back there where raiko needed or or ryuchi depending on how you set your campaign up for who was in charge of what when came over wherever but you could have an analog over in marketplace set up that is prior to the invasion because remember the invasion is still secret mm -hmm. they we core earth still doesn't know there's an actual invader in this region they just think that it's you know some folks have shown up and they're helping they've had some wonderful breakthroughs in these various corporations but um uh, Ryko could have set them up and said okay i know like in the in the case of uh Anyang security we're going to need that corporation to be integrated with kanawa really really quickly so we're we're standing up a corporation, a marketplace called An Young Security, and here are all my people, and you people know what your job is when we get there, and we're going to interface, and you're going to all of a sudden show up and take jobs at the the Core Earth Corporation, and then you'll advance rapidly through the ladder because that's how we're going to work it, and then when you take it over, you do this other thing, and then we'll connect the two, and it'll be you know one big happy, so that as the GM needs those corporations to exist on marketplace for whatever reason you can absolutely do that um or not up to you um but because it's the secret invasion i guess cyber papacy kind of started out as a secret invasion until it wasn't yeah. um <laughs> and everybody every, and now everybody's like yeah but look they gave me a leg back and bob got his eye back and so why would we want them to go away um i mean they keep the they keep the demons from Never mind, they brought the demons, but they keep the demons from, et cetera, et cetera. Well, in Pan Pacifica's case, they don't even realize that there's an invader in the region because it's it's not like in Isle, you've got it pretty much Europe. Boom, Isle, right? But in Pan Pacifica, you've got this stretched across multiple continents that just like, hey, wait, why do we have this over here and this over here and this over here? And all of a sudden, an island's set up in different places, South Korea, North Korea, Japan, China, you know, this Australia. is all over. Yeah, Australia. It's all over the place. So it, it, you can't point to one, like with with Tharkold, you can point to Russia and say, mm -hmm. look, Tharkold, 
right? Pretty much. Um, living land. Look, America. You you can you can pretty much cover a geographic region with most of the the invasions. You can't do that with Pan Pacifica, and because that just helps play into, well, we we're not invaders. It, it just plays into that that motif that this is just you know you just had some technological advancements that's fantastic, and these people know what they're doing, and oh look, we showed up and happened to help you beat back this really bad contagion that you had. We're not bad people. We're just here for profit margin, right? And so the corporations can play that game. And this goes back to what we said last week. There's there's a public front and then there's a private, right? There's the one that everybody sees. And sometimes that's the that's not just a public and a private. That's a public and a secret because if I my secret gets out, then people will realize that I'm a bad guy from someplace else and I've come to take all your stuff. And this is how I'm going to do it. So – I, I, I really like because it sits right next to that's just sitting right next to my <laughs> right next to there because I had to print it out because I needed it. Um, the corporate structure from Classic Torque, which is super handy. And I, I'm going to stop now before I say something I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's good with logos, the Infiniverse could use a corporate. Oh, culture. dude, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> good, good Infiniverse exchange product. Um, so, so taking a, a step back, we use some terms to make sure that people understand what we're uh, talking about is the different realities and cosms that invaded core earth aren't all identical. And Jay, you kind of mentioned how it's a little bit, you know, different with the, the pre-planning, but the, the reality, the pan Pacific Pan Pacifica reality is from the cosm of marketplace, which is from classic Torg, where all the continents kind of just all the land got developed and then they started moving outward. And it's just these huge mega cities with mega corporations running them. And then once the darkness device came and they were able to reach new cosms, and invade they as i mentioned last time they would take over most everything but they would leave a small section of that invaded reality's reality because they might want something from it they didn't want to completely get rid of it so you have little patches you could call them like concentration areas or reservations or you know something like that where the native reality and some native people are from that cosm are there everything else on there was it wasn't destroyed it was used as resources and those invaded cosms plus marketplace with all the businesses and corporations that's what's known as the conglomerate so basically that's marketplace plus the previously invaded um, cosms that they were, were successful in. And then they invade Earth. And one of the things I do really like about the Torg Eternity Pan Pacifica versus the, the classic Torg is in classic Torg in any adventure, as soon as you were met with NPCs who were Asian and or usually tourists, you immediately knew that they were Kanawa and it was just a, a worn out trope even back in the 1990s, the second time it happened. With Pan Pacifica, it's very different. Pan Pacifica, both Marketplace and the conglomerate, conglomerate as a whole, have many different types of ethnic or appearance of ethnic backgrounds and they choose people to invade or to set up that look like locals however that uh, diversity is so when they uh, decide to invade say that they would decide to invade italy they would not send a bunch of people that look like asians to italy they would do a lot of people that would look like South Euro European, 
send them there, set up these corporations, very much like Cold War spies, where you have all the movies and, and tropes um, where you have like the Russian spies who pretend to be married, pretend to have a family, raise their kids, but they're all, you know, set up to be as if they're perfect American as they're, you know, stealing information until they need to be extracted or their cover is blown and they need to run away. So those are other types of story seeds that you can use for your background and or your missions in Torg Eternity because I... I there is another invasion area that took place, but it is kind of a, a later thing, so I don't want to spoil it too for the, the few people that haven't had that occur in their games. But, again, they send the right people. They give them the crash course. You know, They do Duolingo double time <laughs> to, to learn the, <laughs> the language, and they probably are watching documentaries and learning you know, to pronounce things with the correct accent so that they can fit in as normal people and as jay pointed out a lot of companies that had never been affected by the actual axioms of pan pacifica were either installed or bought out by kanawa corporation decades ago to give that legitimate front that if hey look this company has been in the United States since the, you know, near the end of World War II, way beyond the, you know, previous to the invasion. It's never been bought out. It's, you know, president, CEO, you know, is the, the fourth, you know, you know, dad passed it to son, blah, 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 makes it all look for, for those who realize that the invasion is going, it makes it a lot harder to detect and i really like that about pan pacifica um more than in classic torg where it was just like oh look at that tourist flashing you know a, a camera they're kanawa it should be a lot more difficult um in torg eternity to just be pointing and, and saying you know that they're from there now if they're from living land or cyber papacy, that might be very obvious, you know, wearing cyber <laughs> cyber arms or, you know, carrying spears and stone bolas and stuff like that. But that's something. Plus that it's I, just uh, fashion. Yeah, right. <laughs> get, get it. Hey, we saw a, a cosplay in that living land, you know, based <laughs> uh, TV show that, that is there. Um, Someone could throw a dinner party that's living land themed. Themed. You know? <laughs> um so what else would you like to talk about or that has well, struck you thinking about pan pacifica one thing i would kind of like to go over a little bit mm -hmm. is during the development of pan pacifica and when people started to talk about them i wasn't really very much behind the idea of gene mods mm -hmm. um i was like i don't want it to be too cyberpunky this way we already have cybernetics and we already have occult tech do we really need another one uh but people really wanted it and uh, it kept going but it, i think it added although i'm still not like uh necessarily huge on the gene mods themselves i think what it did is added my new favorite thing about pan pacifica which is the company panama gene tech or panama genetic who knows uh <laughs> this is really I've, i'm always just gonna say gene tech um mm -hmm. you know so i really like the idea of this company that is selling you these modifications and then you're stuck in the subscription eul uh, um you know hell basically mm -hmm. and um us you know i'm pretty sure it's probably going to make it through but uh expanding on them a little bit like how they worked in marketplace as well as um what was going on on core earth adding some new threats uh, to the game. I've talked about this on Discord before, but like one of my favorite things is to add in Repo Men. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone has ever seen Repo, the genetic opera, uh, which is an out there uh, kind of musical, <laughs> but uh, goth opera, if you will. But um, 
even before there was gene mods, Panama Gene Tech would have existed uh, since gene mods actually came after the initial right. invasion even. And so even with Tech 24, before Pan Pacifica swiped some, uh, acquired some axioms from Kadandra, uh, even with Tech 24 medicine, they could do some incredible things. They could heal you faster. You, they could prolong aging. Uh, that was, in fact, one of Raiko's big things was getting another biomedical company that uh, prolonged the lifespan of the rich and powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so Panama Gene Tech would also supply these things to you as long as you paid your subscription. You need a new liver uh, or a heart transplant? Sure thing. And if you work for a corporation, it's totally free. It's you don't part of your health, to, health it's package. Part of, it's part of your package. You just get it for free. If you're fired, though, or anything happens to you, suddenly you have like a few days to pay or the repo man comes for you. Mm -hmm. And the repo man will either demand payment or he'll take it back because that is the property of Panama Gene Tech. And whether you're alive or dead at the end of that, he doesn't care. So that's a, a new kind of thing that I've really been dealing with. I've added that into my campaigns. Um, it just added a whole other level. Uh, and then even in the main, like the source book, if you get the early super dodgy gene mods <laughs> and you don't pay, you just dissolve into a pile of salt, basically. Mm -hmm. So people are desperate enough that they're doing this. They're signing their life away without even thinking about it. Uh, and then suddenly when they can't make their payments after a few months, it's, they don't even need to send the repo, man. It's just... So I think that has been one of the most flavorful new additions uh, in Torg Eternity versus the old, uh, the old one. So the biotech has actually added a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. It's not just physical or... Yeah. Metal tech. <laughs> so, Mark, any, any thoughts on the whole way gene mods and stuff work with the corporations and the, the worker and the people on the streets, et cetera? Well, the, the gene mods, I mean, they're, they're kind of the, the, they're the cyber tech, they're the cyber yeah. tech equivalent. Mm -hmm for pan pacifica where you've got x number of dollars and you can go put these things together it's a lot of fun building out the the way that the gene mods work with bio squirts and different things like that that you could put together how this functions and you've got some flavor that you can work with say well this is it's installed here but this is what it does and, it, and you know you re i don't want to say reskin it but you just add your own fluff text on how the the gene mod works for your character which is just like you know a an addition but it's 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 kind of the the you can look at it as the corporate the corporation and uh panel on gene techs this is their stuff that they license or maybe the corporation did their own and they're trying to compete with them and you can mm -hmm. have your corporate branded stuff that may have its own problems that you know if you if as long as you're working for the corporation, again, it's still a benefit, right? And everything, every step back from that for a second, everything in Pan Pacifica is tied to your corporation. If you don't have a corporation, you just don't have an identity, um, and you're pretty much ostracized. Now they're like, wait a minute. Uh, even if it's a small mom and pop startup, but you're, you know, mom and pop corp LLC or something along those lines, but you got to have so you can't, nobody just, that's just crazy talk not to, to, to be unemployed. There are people, but so as a benefit from your corporation, you've got these gene mods that if you stop working for your corporation, they take them back. So maybe if you're going to move to a different corporation, that's part of your package. You have to negotiate that they buy you out, whatever. It's just, it's a different, it's just a different flavor for how, it, and it's an aspect that's unique to Pan Pacifica because the cyber papacy doesn't have anything like it mm -hmm. for for cyberware. You've got you know sanctioned versus unsanctioned cyberware, and you got to hack it and get you know a, a a mechanic or a street doctor to put it in for you. And cyber liker. Yeah. yeah, and they can take <laughs> care of that for you, and it's it's risky. That's kind of been, I guess, played down somewhat for for 
published material, but from the standpoint of home games, that's absolutely a, I've found this, you know, that's almost like loot you can get. Cyber papacy has got one of those things where the, one of the very few things in Torg Eternity that's that's loot like, which is if you want to be that kind of grizzly, you can, you know, scavenge some cyberware. You could if you had some medical skill and wanted to build that tech up, you could build a, a scavenging bio biotech and gene mods and things like that, like the repo guy does, which is a grizzly and and that's just just all kinds of Blade Runner kind of stuff going on there. Or Johnny Mnemonic, where he's coming to take your cyber arm or your your eyes or the the bio squirt or whatever you've got, and that's just kind of it's fun, it's cool. Um, but I, the idea that that your gene mods really aren't yours from a from a metagaming standpoint, they're perks that your character put into your character, and so they belong to you and they can't really be taken away, but it's a fine line and it's difficult to walk that when the flavor of the campaign is these belong to your corporation and you should feel pressured and at risk to do what your corporation wants because you have their gene mods in you. And I think that gets lost on player characters sometimes because mm -hmm. I paid my seven XP. I got my biotech stuff installed and now I just do what I do. And when, you know, mom and pop corp LLC comes by and says, Hey, we need you to do this thing because remember that stuff we gave you, we're going to turn it off if you don't. Yeah. So actually I could, I could see an interesting campaign where somebody say a character or a player, sorry, wanted their character to have a bunch of gene mods that they didn't pay for the, the third generation, which <laughs> right. re re removes those uh, conditions and say, sure, you start off with second generation and you're going to have to pay those through, you know, working for your corp or even, you know, through money that you might obtain during your missions, etc. But they are those second gen that could shut down or, you know, be revoked if you fail to, you know, to follow the terms and conditions that you've read through and then click the yes, you know, at the, the accept button at the end. And then as the character got XP spent to kind of pay off those or to, to get the Delphi council to be able to turn them into third, you know, tweak them or do whatever little genetic thing that they need to do to, to make them so they they don't go away or, kill you because it was something vital i've always kind of made it in pan pacifica it's the most dangerous place to have that kind of stuff because the alien will check you mm -hmm. right like so they could tell that you have hacked gene mods if they run a scan on you and the corporations can use contagion checks as a s excuse to scan anybody mm -hmm. so you, so they might find that you have these hacked uh, gene mods and arrest you for um, IP infringement, <laughs> or right. like whatever whatever the term is that they're gonna piracy. Use for it. It's piracy. Yes, yeah, <laughs> it is just piracy. And I would say, like in the cyber papacy, that can happen as well uh, to a lesser extent. A cyber priest might look at you and realize that the godnet is not speaking to him through your implants or something, and declare you a heretic. Whereas I think in Tharkold, you know sort of just whatever but <laughs> if, if they can beat you little, up they beat you up <laughs> that puts a level of of i mean it, the goal is to put the level of paranoia on the player yeah with, but not, with not that. like go after but, them but. well but but you know if you set it up where arbitrarily i need this cyber priest to be able to look at you and and know and turn the hounds on you but this cyber priest can look at you and he doesn't know that that's a little well, it's I know, a good excuse a little... for those um, paranoia cards, cousin cards. It right? does, but I would say, for me, they would have to. They would have to. The 
the Delphi Council knows these things, and so they right. set them up so they look mm. like they're doing what they're supposed to do at a casual observation. But if you've drawn the attention of the authorities and they decide to focus on you and say, hey, come here, I want to, you need to let me jack in, I want to scan your stuff. Now they've, you know, if, yeah, if they yeah. successfully I'm not saying do, like someone then they can get you, but not just, <laughs> and it's, yeah, but it's, and if I misunderstood you, I'm sorry. It just, it sounded like the, you know, with a simple bio scan, I can figure out that your squirt's not there, but I need to take, maybe I need to take some of your, you know, okay, let me take a sample, a blood sample. I have to run a check mm -hmm. and they've got, you know, a tricorder or whatever. And they just go, and now they can tell. So, and you're now to your back to the whole, the whole, the same level of paranoia that the psionic characters are at who, no, no, don't touch me. Right. Because if I touch you, I can read your mind and I don't want you to read my mind. And so I'm not going to let you touch me as in don't let him get a DNA sample because then he finds out, oh, yeah, all my stuff's hacked and I'm not really with you guys. Mm -hmm. So I, I would put a level in between yeah. just, you know, eyesight or a, or a simple scan and and the oh, turn the release the hounds. You know, uh, they, I think it needs to be a little bit, but the, but it's still there because you've drawn Cyber Priest all of a sudden is looking at you square in the eye and you're like, oh shit, he's coming over here. Yeah. And that it should always make an encounter more interesting. Right. Yes. So yeah, g gene mods are it's cool because they're linked to c to corporations, and I could even see in the the future where other corporations start making equivalent mm -hmm. gene mods competitive gene and mods. and then it's like you know are you a are you a i you know iphone or android are you are you microsoft <laughs> or mac you know or, there is at or, least <laughs> one delphi mission that talks about that <laughs> so, <laughs> so that that's also a cool thing where you would have branded gene mods and then you could either be happy that you got, you know, the the popular one, or ridicule those who have the the cheap Walmart ver version. Yeah, <laughs> you got the freebie version of Gene Mod. Yeah. So that before you can lift that thing off of your crushed companion, you have to watch these three ads. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I completely encourage game masters and players to go with stuff like that because that's kind of what the the corporations of pan pacific are they're gonna Absolutely. give you that that free version with hooks they're gonna give you a 30-day trial version that shows you how wonderful it is so you can't live without it once those 30 days are gone even though you lived how many ever years before you ever had it without yeah. needing it um, but look look at those modern tropes. Look at a lot of uh, – if, if we go off of TV and movies and stuff, I always uh, like Black Mirror. Is, uh, I, I look at a lot of their stuff. They had like – it was almost like a Yelp review for people on social yeah. media. I'm, you know, Which that's is already that, a thing in China anyway. Yeah, so that's, yeah. You know, that's a, something <laughs> to use in, in Pan Pacifica where, you know, little – I, I uh, had contacts where they would have a little head-up display wearing contacts, and if it facial recognition on people, then it would give you their Yelp review, <laughs> and you could you know do that yeah. type of stuff. O almost like in the cyber path. Like like yeah, like the piety scores, but it isn't religious focused. It's on corporations and brands and you corporate know, loyalty. How, how cool you are and what sponsors you get and stuff like right. that but basically just take all of the the stuff we encounter today and just push it to the extreme um so i don't remember which one of you it was but somebody had mentioned psychic it was mark mark was talking about psychics and and touch and reading mind and stuff so let's talk about the uh it's not really a culture per se but it is a a group of people that have psychic abilities and how the corporations feel about them. So Jay, what would your thoughts be on psychic characters, both player characters and NPCs in Pan Pacifica? Psychics are kind of weird in Pan Pacifica because you would think it would be the most fertile playground for them. But the fact that they have to touch you 
makes it harder, <laughs> right, uh, for them. Uh, so you basically have two levels of psychics. You've got your psychic mutants, which are just randomly appearing ever since Chung Po. Anyway, one of the conglomerate's uh, new uh, acquisitions um, started to have more psychics pop up. Because, I mean, I guess Marketplace was already Tech 24, so they had the mm -hmm. capability for psychics. It was probably relatively You're rare. So social. Social, sorry. Uh, and then once they acquired this, they suddenly started to get a bunch. And that seems to be their issue, really. And also, like, once they acquired another one, they start getting a bunch of these priests of Palin. Uh, you know, but... Uh, so these psychic mutants just appear. It could be anybody. And the corporations don't really like that because they want it to be a power that they can use for themselves. And the fact that anyone could get it kind of disrupts their, you know, everyone with the money has all the power kind of dynamic. Mm -hmm. And then the other version is the disciplined psychics, which actually have to, you know, they, they learn to meditate and, and bring it out that way, I guess, almost the more natural version. Um, and somewhere in between, there's like the corporate psychic, uh, where they might just grab some uh, psychic mutants that they find off the street and enter them into like a, you know, quick corporate program and use them up, or they turn them into psychic hounds. And mm -hmm. I really, I find the, in, the, the psychic hounds to be a very interesting thing where it's just psychics that all they can really do is sense other psychics. So they can use them to find these other undesirables that are causing issues uh, amongst the poors and uh, either take them out or recruit them forcibly if needed. So it's um, it's kind of a uh, kind of like in Tharkold where you know again in Tharkold psychics outlawed. If you see a psychic, report it to your demon master, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but I get the impression like in in Tharkold the race is sort of for a long time was holding this secret, mm. whereas in Mar in Pan Pacifica it's just suddenly happening. And there's been psychics from Core Earth already, so it's not an entirely out of the blue kind of situation. Um, so it's maybe a little more common there. And as Mark said, people know about them and are afraid of them, and anyone could be a psychic. So you don't want anyone touching you and reading your mind. Even though a lot of the powers in Pan Pacifica seem to be more kinesis based, they like to jump around and smash crap uh, it's, a, it's always seemed oh, to me like who doesn't yeah like core earth has always had a little bit more of the precog precog with a, a side of fire starter and then pan pacific has been a little bit more kinesis and then tharkold is where all the super telepathy stuff happened but every every psychic realm has potential for all of them. so mm -hmm. that's why i guess it was kind of interesting if psychics were allowed to just go hog wild in pan pacifica and use read mind and mind control on anybody um even though you can't they don't have mind control they have uh altered memory i think but um <clears throat> if they could just use all that stuff it would totally wreck the corporate intrigue dynamic that the realm has so even though if you're a psychic character it can be kind of like ah, oh, it's kind of watering me down it's it's because that's part of the uh, the, the theme of the realm, you know. Yeah, it's part of it. You you don't get you get both sides of the coin there. So yeah, look at it as a challenge. There's some more RP opportunities with it, and mm -hmm. try to make sure that the psychics in each of the different realms that have psychics feel different. Mark, your your thoughts on psychics and their place in Pan Pacifica. If they so, have a place. <laughs> well, nobody <laughs> likes them. Uh, Pan Pacifica, the, 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 in my opinion, in the public view of, of psychics, nobody likes them. They've been ostracized because, as Jay pointed out, if I have, if I'm, if I have this grand plan that I'm putting in motion and I have all this intrigue that's moving around and all of a sudden you just kind of stare at me, put your finger on your temple and know what my grand plan is. I don't have a grand plan anymore. And so the, for whatever reason, 
that has been weeded out through the the various invasions and the, the world laws that have come about because the law of intrigue doesn't the law of intrigue needs it to not work that way in order for the law of intrigue to be the law of intrigue um and so you can't as a as a storm knight who has built their shtick around what they do as as all read mind mind control and all that kind of stuff yeah this is Japan Pacific is not the best place for you and welcome to a world where you know everything doesn't work perfectly this is this, this isn't a oh I'm nerfed I can't do my stuff and so I don't want to play it's this is the challenge that you have before you to overcome. How do I, okay, how do I physically touch the, this person so that I can do what I, cause if you can touch them, however you do that, you can do what you want to do. But you know, we, you, you've essentially, you've got three, I don't want to say classes, but I mean, classes of, of psychics. You've got the, the, the discipline psychic, the psychic mutant, and you've got the corporate psychic, which is kind of a, a marrying of the two. They can come from either one. The discipline psychic really, I kind of, I kind of look at the discipline psychic more like the martial arts um, temples and organizations that you know, old kung fu theater kind of, you know, they were all the, they were always over there, and you got this school over here, this school over there, and you could have a formal, if you wanted to have a formal setup where the discipline psychic learns to control their abilities and that they, they are formally taught, and then they license them out to the corporations to be corporate psychics you could have that set up um but they 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 are absolutely very structured in what they they do they have a they have a a routine that makes them fit into how that they have a disciplined lifestyle that allows them to do what they do the the psychic mutant is more the wildling or the rebel or the the people just learned i don't i'm, I'm rejecting society and i'm gonna do my own thing and and i just learned how to do it and i learned how to hide it too because society doesn't like it very much. And if they identified me, it's almost like Psychor from Babylon 5. If they identified me as a psychic, they would grab me and stuff me in one of those uh, disciplined psychic groups so that the, they could catalog me and know where I am and, and control me and use me. But since they don't know, I've just developed it how I do it, which is different from how they do it, which is why you've got two different schools. The corporate psychic guys and gals who are doing this are – sanctioned if you will to do this but they are inside of a corporation and there is as many flavors of those as there are corporations because anytime you find a corporation that has a corporate psychic it's because that psychic does allow the corporation to do some faucet of what their plan is in pan pacifica they aid and advance the corporate agenda and if they don't they shouldn't be with that corporation they should there should never ever in my opinion there should never be a psychic corporate psychic uh corporate psychic at a corporation with no purpose just like yeah i'm over here at abc corp because this is where i work i don't really go out and do anything i just kind of sit here and draw a paycheck and i'm not involved in any plans and i'm not i don't know anything about their intrigue because i just i've got this little box over here they keep me because they don't know what to do with me I, that should never happen yeah, they're not going to use you for data entry. <laughs> yeah, they're not. Yeah, you're not sitting there in the temp pool waiting to figure out what's happening. That there's always a purpose for those people, um, and because physical contact can allow all of your because everybody has the law of intrigue, and I, I would love to get into the law of intrigue a little bit more in the fifth column aspect of it because we haven't covered that hardly at all. The law of intrigue kind of requires that every single person in Pan Pacifica has a plan of some kind, and there is some secret aspects of that plan. They don't want people to know. Big plans, little plans, doesn't matter. Planning somebody's birthday, surprise birthday party, <laughs> they ha everybody has a secret plan of some kind that they don't want somebody else to know about. And if you can physically touch them and learn that plan, you know, so – Physical contact, that's a huge sign of trust. If, so, if, if, if someone in Pan Pacifica allows you to touch them, it's, it's an overt I trust you statement because they're trusting you're not going to either look for their plan or if 
by some happenstance you happen to find out their plan, you're not going to reveal it. So you work that into how you do your game because that, you know, someone who is willing to shake, you know, the Western people, we like, we love shaking hands, you know, Pan Pacific is like, no, no, I, I don't do that. But if they actually reciprocate and shake your hand, that should be a sign that they trust you, in my opinion. So to, to remember the thought that just fell out of my head two seconds ago, <laughs> um, with with uh, psychics, yeah, the the corporate psychics, I like to think that they have purpose and they are used, uh, like Jay said, to hunt other psychics or for those stealth type operations. Um, th there is where the thought went. And then you have the other psychics, which the corporations will use as a, oh, look at these horrible people that can read your minds and do all these bad things. You know, re report them, look out, you know, stay within the safety of the Kanawa plan. And they're going to use those similar to how they're using uh, the, con or they use the contagion and cyber papacy use the demons and etc is they are a new new ish phenomena that it is a oh look they're the new boogeyman they're the new bad things that you know you want to be af afraid of you get people to fear something and then you provide the solution and that's it and just to make it perfectly clear it's only certain psychic abilities that only work with touch so it's usually the mind altering and reading stuff. It's not any of the other psychic abilities. Yeah. So it's not like I, you know, if I'm in cyber papacy, I can zap that guy with a mind bolt. Well, you can still do that. You're just not reading their mind or mm -hmm. telepathy. So in, in those ways, there's absolutely no difference. So when things like that would be caught on film, and as we uh, talked about previously, put on TikTok or YouTube or live streams or whatever, that's going to get people talking and people afraid and scared, et cetera. And then for, for those who are, especially in my opinion, like the mutant psychics that it just randomly happened and all of a sudden they wake up and have these weird powers and they know that everybody considers them bad and maybe they even think what what badness did i do to you know deserve this that that could also bring in plot and story to add to your adventures whether it's a character going through that one of you know a player character going through that or somebody's kid ran away and you're sent to find them uh, because they're the you know vice cfo's kid and then you find out it's because you know they had psychic powers and didn't want their parents to know and then what are you doing etc so i think that that um can can bring out some good stories and, and role playing within pan pacifica um so mark uh you were talking about you wanted to jump in and, and do some uh sabotage fifth column type stuff so <laughs> yeah, let's so let you do that <laughs> Law of intrigue. You got in the in the corporate structure, right? You've got the C-suite executives, middle managers, low workers, guys that are on basic hoping not to get on unemployment, and then you've got the unemployed sitting below them that have just nobody wants them anymore, and that that you got the dregs of society down there, and that's kind of like the bottom of the barrel in Pan Pacifica, right? The unemployed. I mean, oh my gosh, who doesn't have a corporation? That's that's like horrific. You, you, nightmares are made of that stuff so you've got the law of intrigue where all of these corporations are set up as, as i was saying earlier that everybody has everybody has a plan to advance their corporation to advance whatever they're doing but it's always you know we want to we want to advance and we want to bring our competition down so we've got to be able to move those plans forward well the law of intrigue, by definition, it, you can't have intrigue if you don't have someone opposing you. 
And even when you have, you know, a handful of mega corporations that are just, we have absorbed everything and we have a monopoly on whatever it is, you know, whatever this thing is, we have a monopoly on this thing. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, life is good. I don't have to worry about a thing because I own it all. The law of intrigue says that there are people within you that are dissatisfied with that and they want to see you fall and they're working against you. And it doesn't matter how big or small your corporation is. It doesn't matter how intricate or basic your plan is. The law of intrigue within Pan Pacifica says that there is somebody out there who is going to betray that. And it's kind of why the Delphi Council has compartmentalized all of their, their missions in Pan Pacifica, because if they just had this grand director of – this is the director of operations for Pan Pacifica, and that director has set out, this is my vision for the, the COSM, and this is what we're going to do, and we're going to put all these these things in motion, they would all fail because – Somebody in Pan Pacifica would betray all of it, and the the director would get assassinated, or every plan would just fail because it would be betrayed. Or so what? So the Delphi Council has at least been smart enough to realize that, and they've compartmentalized it to the point where nobody who ever gets into Pan Pacifica knows the whole. Th it's the classic. It's classic um, cell structure mm -hmm. from a resistance movement where, you know, individual cells don't know the whole picture. They just know what they're supposed to do. And and so you have this compartmentalized approach that you could, as a Delphi Council operative running around in Pan Pacifica, be doing something that makes absolutely no sense to you. And you need to do it exactly the way it was given to you because someone else who that you don't know about is absolutely relying on you to do exactly what you were told to do. That makes no sense. And by the same token, you could run into a group that's doing something that makes no sense to you because you found it in a vacuum. And they they're willing to die for this thing that looks ridiculous. And you're like, why would you die for this? That's I, I don't get it. Purple marbles rolling around in the bottom of a toilet bowl make no sense at all. I don't understand what's going on. This is ridiculous until you interdict another cell over here that's doing something else completely different with the water system and you suddenly realize that they've been putting an additive in the system that if it gets to the purple marbles in the bottom of the toilet bowl they will explode shatter whatever blah 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 but that's that's the the law of intrigue out there and it works for and against storm knights and game masters you need to you need to be aware of this it's a it's a tool you can use when your storm knights are stuck. There's always somebody who's willing to betray their corporation for the right, just to apply the right leverage on them, and they will betray their corporation because they have a secret too. And if you can figure out what their secret is, you can apply it against them to get them to betray the corporation, and now you have an out for whatever piece of information they didn't get or you know codes they don't have or access to something they don't have or whatever they missed, and suddenly this person can provide that linchpin if you can move them in the right direction. Jay, your your thoughts on that? There's also the other side of the law of intrigue, because like on one hand, it makes telepathy and mind reading harder. But on the other hand, even though Pan Pacifica is a total surveillance state. Mm -hmm. um, you're under, you're being watched by camera almost constantly. It's not as uh, everywhere as in the cyber papacy. You don't, your toaster isn't uh, narking on you to that level. Uh, but they are more efficient with mm -hmm. getting through it. So it could sometimes be even worse <laughs> than in the cyber papacy. Uh, but the other half of the law of intrigue is that. Any persuasion tests uh, or trick tests in order to try to lie about something are favored. So it's actually relatively easy. Like if you get caught doing something, bluffing your way out is much easier in Pan Pacifica than in other places. So, and the fact that, as Mark was saying, like every group has traitors, every group is also expecting traitors. Mm -hmm. And you can just point to anyone in the room and accuse them of something <laughs> and, <laughs> and it, it so don't be afraid to use that um 
uh, as a storm knight. In fact, it's probably a little bit safer now because pre in the in the very like the first few months of the invasion with the law of vengeance is still on there. Mm-hmm. You would make an enemy, they would vow vengeance on you, and now it would become like a whole friggin' deal. Right? And then, <laughs> but then that got replaced with the um, law of rationalism, so people don't take it as personally anymore mm-hmm. i guess right but <laughs> there was a lot of blood feuds Just going business. around before uh and that was apparently uh yeah so i mean there's also there is still the law of tenacity though so if you do royally screw someone over uh they probably will still come for you but mm-hmm. not in as not in a uh, rain soaked duel with katanas in the top of a roof somewhere <laughs> kind of deal it'd probably be more like you know, wiping out your bank account or something. Right, get, get you fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, so, so don't forget that intrigue works both ways. Just lie your ass off. <laughs> I, I I think that's funny too. You know, it's like, hey, why are you doing this? And telling the truth is like, oh, come on, that's not right. I mean, you just lie, <laughs> you lie, and that's much more reasonable and accepted yep. than you know telling telling the truth. So yeah, every everything out there is everybody knows that there's moles but those moles if they're smart are going to be able to lie about them being moles and then stay moles um mark you're uh four marble four purple marbles <laughs> you know hitting with a <laughs> with a a water source is i'm thinking yes because then the the you know chief vice president uses that restroom and uh, he, yeah, he likes he 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 the toilet, he, the bar. Or, or <laughs> he he likes diablo sauce on his taco bell and it reacts with the <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's what you could set up with that but yeah that's, that's just kind of funny so you can there, there's just a lot of ways to use the way um the different ways that the corporation structure in pan pacifica works to come up with some really good um, intrigue and you can get your spy stuff you can get your cold war type things happening Um, you can get your heists um, which is a could be a whole other topic uh, in the future and that but um, hopefully that helps with the last episode to get more of a feel for how you can run things in Pan Pacifica and how to think about how Pan Pacifica is different than Core Earth, even though they're trying to blend in and say that, no, there is no invasion happening. Their axioms are close, but their structure is very different than um, anything out there almost uh, extreme in in ways so having said that do write us at torgdcd at gmail.com we will read your email if you have questions we'll try to answer those to the best of our abilities if you have comments we will comment on your comments but until then we hope you have fun in your own cosmverse bye <laughs> <laughs>